Hey, it's Amy with Community Media, and one of the things I love to do in Adams County is meet the people who live here and find out who they are and what they do. So join me today in Gettysburg while I go into Civil War tales and find out about the passion project of the two sisters, Rebecca and Ruth Brown. Come on and join me. Hey, Rebecca. Hi, welcome. So good to see you again. It's been a minute. So I'm here meeting new people and finding out what you do in Adams County. And Civil War Tales yeah. caught my eye about a year ago when I stopped by. And I know this is a passion project for you and your sister. So can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, so I'm Rebecca Brown and my twin sister Ruth and I have been uh, making our dioramas for over 25 years. And so um, we are the co-owners of Civil War Tales Diorama Museum here in Gettysburg. And we've been open since fall of 2015. And so we enjoy showing our dioramas to folks, getting to share our passion with um, people. So there's two passions that I'm seeing, if yes. I'm right. The first passion is the Civil War and history here in Gettysburg. The second passion is cats. Yes. So we started making our soldiers when we were 11. So I read biographies on Generals Lee and Grant, and then I liked the two generals, so I made them out of clay. We always fiddled with clay growing up. Well, they automatically came out as cats in uniform with beards because we always had cats growing up, and we pretty much catified and personified everything. I love that you catify it. And then, yeah, we just started making the officers we were reading about and troops for them to command, and a couple years into it, we started actually doing dioramas with them. So we do still have the original Lee and Grant. They're in the Barrister's bookcase, so if folks can see them when they come in. They will be turning 28 in the end of June. So oh my they're goodness. Pretty old. So speaking of people coming in, this yeah. is open to the public. Yep. What days of the week and what hours? So the only days that were closed are Sunday and Wednesday. Okay. And the first Thursday of the month because we have something. <laughs> um, so we're open weekdays 11 to 8. And then Saturday, we're open 10 to 8. Wonderful. And then we do shorten our hours in the winter. That's basically December through March. And what is the admission to get in to see these beautiful dioramas? So for adults, it's 650. And for kids, it's 5. Kids are 6 to 12. And 5 and under is free. So, 5 and under are free. Yeah. So I'm looking across this expansive diorama. And there are hundreds, if not thousands, throughout the Yes. Your entire space. How many yes. so, handmade? So this one has 3,000 on it. This is the angle during Pickett's Charge. Um, in the museum, we've got almost 7,500 on display. On our census, we've topped 9,000. 9,000 handmade. Yeah. And that's not counting ones that we've sold over the and years. And each given one away. is individually painted in the correct uniform? Um, so a lot of them we don't have to paint. Actually, they are modeling clay that comes colored. And so, yes, we try to make them historically accurate um, and also to scale for the diorama um, so that you can get an idea of what the action would look like. We like picking a specific point in time. And so that means figuring out, you know, with the identified officers and men who is up, who's been wounded, who's off the diorama, who's not. Um, and so, yeah, we have fun. So historically, um, this is really accurate. Yeah, as close as we can figure, you know. Um, this is great. Yeah. What What is your favorite one in here that you've done? Do Actually, you... Pickett's Charge is my this favorite. Is... Yeah, which is why it's um, our largest um, finished diorama. But it's always been the largest until we started Little Round Top. Um, but yeah, I've always liked reading about Pickett's Charge. Um, yeah. So is Little Round Top. Sure. I see that one too. So we do have other Civil War scenes like Fort Sumter and the battle between the ironclads and, and all. Um, but we've got a little round top here. It is still under construction. Just like the actual I, little yeah, round top right now. About to say that. Um, <laughs> so yes. it's kind of fitting. So uh, we'll have to see whether we can beat the Park Service or whether they'll beat us at finishing it. Um, we started <laughs> this one in 2013, and it's been on the back burner because that's when we bought the house well, and moved out here. But so you can have still it, working on it a simultaneous grand opening when it know, right? opens for the Park Service <laughs> and you. Yeah, this so is we've really got a We've 2,000 cats on this one so far. So speaking of numbers, how many visitors do you think you get a year? Um, it's around 3,000 or so. And of course, it varies. It's a lot busier July and August than it is January and February. 
and you get some tours that come yeah. through. And one of the things that might be great for our Adams County is having some more schools involved, getting the kids to come through. Because I know yeah. when you learn about history, I will say as a young child, it can feel overwhelming and boring. But what you've created here with your sister Ruth is anything but boring. This is well, a new way to look at it and learn from a completely different visual experience. Yeah, it is nice for kids. And when we do have groups, like school groups coming in, we like to offer a scavenger hunt if they have the time and if they want to do it. But that's a way for them to um, go around and find various facts on the write-ups of the dioramas. And so it's kind of a way for them to be able to engage without having to listen to me talk. Um, so I'll tell a little bit about the history of our house and the history of the museum and our dioramas, but then let them go. And then it also allows us to be able to talk one-on-one -on -one when kids actually have questions. And so they can, you know, pick what diorama actually catches their interest and ask questions about it and, and all that. Um, I'm a horse person. I've always loved horses. And cats a close second. <laughs> you have something over here that catches my attention as well. Yeah. Cats on the horses. Yep. Well, we do make most of our horses. Um, we do still have some of our old store-bought ones from growing up. But um, at the moment, I think it's 88% of our horses on our census are ones that we've made. So this is East Cavalry Field. Um, we revamped our old cavalry battle to show the fighting on July 3rd here at Gettysburg. Um, and so one of the, the fun things that folks can do is find the 20 store-bought horses on the diary. There's 20 here. Yeah, there are 20. So this Out is of 313. An... Oh, my gosh. Not counting the seven officers. So this is a precise of what it would have looked like when they met yeah, on the battlefield so, coming yeah, so together. Yeah, so the ranks are spaced out correctly. Um, and then in this particular charge, they did run head-on into each other. And so the larger horse is going to flip the smaller horse. Um, when they meet, because you're galloping stroke to stroke. There's nowhere to go wow. except up or down. Um, so we do have the, the clash in the middle. Um, got General Custer. Uh, oh, Colonel, my Colonel goodness. Town commands the 1st Michigan, and Custer is the brigade commander. But he's riding alongside yelling, come on, you Wolverines, um, joining them in it. This is spectacular. But, yeah, we, we've always liked horses, too. So You've created camp areas. We yeah. know what the camps look like. Yeah, those are some of our older cats, too. Farms. So. And then this one here is Ruth's favorite. Um, that's our first to scale diorama. So Pickett's Charge is our first topographical diorama, and um, Battery Wagner here predates Pickett's Charge by a year or so. We made this one right around the same time as Y2K because um, we put Cat 3000 on it at Y2K, <laughs> midnight, January 2000. Um, but yeah, this is the 54th Massachusetts attacking Battery Wagner. Um, and so the 54th Massachusetts is, has been one of Ruth's favorite regiments, and we're looking forward to doing a new version of that once we finish Little Round Top. Uh, Something else I like about this, when you're done, you can take a little piece with you. So you sell merchandise mm -hmm. of your yep. handcrafted. Yep. Can we, we have see way some too of much that? fun designing our merchandise. How long does it take you to make a cat in so, full uniform? Um, a cat should take about seven to ten minutes. Um, <laughs> with the colored clay, it is nice because it's a good deal faster than having to paint them. But yes, we have our little display domes. Um, and then, I of course, these. you can put in a special order if you want something specific. And would that um, be something like this over here? Well, sometimes, um, no, sometimes special orders could be um, in a larger dorm, a dome. We have a larger dome. But sometimes if someone wants their cat made into a Civil War cat, they can send photos of their cat or their dog. Um, and we'll make them. Speaking of the dog, ours is snoring. Um, but uh, so you, we have a museum dog. Her name is Kelly. She's very sweet. I think that's pretty funny and, that you have a museum dog. People. Yeah. Do you have a museum cat? Well, we did. <laughs> okay. And when so she died, we got Kelly. Her. And now we've got two cats upstairs, but they don't mix. But so they will take over after Kelly dies. The museum so, dog. Yeah. So to come on in, we've got your hours. We know um, the admission price. And then yep. on your way out, of course, there's some great little things that you can take with you to yep. remember. Why I love this space so much is, like I said before, I'm a very visual learner. That's what resonates well with me. And I think yeah. a lot of kids resonate with that. Well, so, and the other thing, too, is since they're cats, it's nice because it makes it more accessible for, like, the non-history types, too. And so 
we've enjoyed sharing our diagrams with the whole gamut from non-history types who came because they're cats and now they can get a little history while they're looking at the cats and also licensed battlefield guides and um you know the history buffs who can come in and enjoy seeing it to scale on a specific point in time and you're seeing the battlefield populated so and uh, everybody in between too you did a great so, job yeah. well i'd love to see more of this so hopefully we'll have you in the studio soon and do a sure. more broad so thank you for joining me today and meeting somebody else in Adams County about who they are and what they do. And this is Civil War Tales in Gettysburg on Baltimore Street. Be sure to visit soon.